you very much. And I um, want to follow up a little bit on the previous talk, not on yours, on the C, but uh, concerning uh, architects, building, and all of the data that are being generated right now. And I want to show you uh, the result of a five years journey that I uh, you know, could do together with my team. Um, what we developed, because it was quite a lot of work, even if it sounds very easy, as you will see afterwards, how we see the future uh, in buildings, how we can enable any smartphone, not only a Google Tango device, to understand where it is right now in a room, if you want to go somewhere, how you can find that way. But as we have seen through the talks the last months and also today, it's also about how can you show the right data on the right spot and how can you make use out of it. And I mean, there's really a lot of data and a lot of use cases coming up. But maybe to start why I'm here, what was the idea at the beginning when we started in 2012 with the project? In general, we've seen that buildings become bigger and bigger and uh, people are getting confused and don't know where to go to. GPS did not work and still not work today in buildings. Um, and in 2012, I mean, beacons became popular, but I, as far as I get the feedback from the talks with our clients, which are airports, shopping malls, factories and so on, um, even if there are a lot of suppliers and implementation and system integrators for beacons, it's still at the end. You have to put a lot of hardware into a building, uh, a lot of wiring, and if you don't wire it, you need a lot of battery that you'd have to change every year, every two years. And at the end, what do you get out of it? A blue dot on a map, and that's everything that you have right now. So um, that's where we are standing right now, and we also have some clients where they are not even able to implement beacons due to the radiation, because I mean, there are maybe factories, hospitals, or other, uh, other venues which are quite sensitive concerning additional radiation. So we, we just said we have to come up with, with something else. And um, I, I just sold uh, another company of mine last week um, where we were focusing the last nine years already on augmented reality and other point of view. And we've seen that um, throughout the last nine years, the only thing that didn't change where you always were able um, to exit it on your smartphone is the camera that you can use. Because I mean, when you're at the beginning, you know, uh, iOS 5 or 6, you even could use Wi-Fi triangulation before they stopped it and said, okay, you have to use Apple API to get your location. So we said, um, let, let's focus on this. We know augmented reality is working and can we really use it uh, to, to understand where you are in a building? So what we developed in general, it's a process that you can record a building. That's what I want to show you right now. Um, we just use a standard digital camera and a fisher lens for this. But to be fair, you even could use your smartphone only if you have a big building like, I don't know, Airport of San Francisco or Heathrow. It just takes quite a while um, to implement. Oh, the video is working. Oops. Can I maybe start the video? Or? Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't like, doesn't work. Okay. Maybe okay. Let's see. Otherwise, I just try it without the video. And um, what we do is, in general, you can take just record the building, which means you're just taking uh, normal pictures. We put the picture in our backend. Our backend then takes every single picture calculates a point cloud out of it um, with the algorithm that we developed on our own because we have seen that most of the SLAM algorithm which are out there right now uh, generate too, many, too much data and what we are looking for is not to reconstruct the building like others are doing it but what we are trying is to get as little data as possible out of the pictures but enough to have a stable tracking. So this was quite a lot of work and uh, what the algorithm then doing is as you can see it here on the left it takes all the pictures, it takes the points, it puts the points together and at the end what do we get is we have a point cloud of the whole building and we merge the point cloud together with the 2D uh, floor plan of the venue and then both together looks like this. So the big advantage is even if you have a mono camera and not a Google Tango device where you have a depth sensor and you can sense the size and the scale of a building, um, we know the scale out of the floor plan. We have the 3D map on top and so even with a normal smartphone, iPhone 6, 7 or any kind of Android device, you understand uh, when you recognize the structure of the building, where you are, and also the size of the building, and so we also know then the, uh, the distance, for instance, how long you have to go to somewhere. Uh, let's see if the video works here. Ah, perfect, that's better. 
Um, so in, in general, what we are doing is um, we have an SDK for iOS and for Android that you can integrate in any kind of application. When you first start in the application, our SDK, what it does is it takes the first one or two pictures. That's now a sequence like it's you know, always positioning you. Um, we calculate again out of the picture the structure that we can recognize. You see, even if there are a lot of people, that's not a big issue. And here, this very small dot is that what our server calculates. So out of the structure that we recognize, we understand where you are standing, where you are looking at, and we directly can then uh, position you very accurate uh, where you are standing. Nope. Ah, perfect. And this, and this enables us uh, to a lot of new use cases because in general the whole building becomes like a huge website for you. Uh, you don't have to implement any kind of special hardware as mentioned, no beacons, no Wi-Fi that you have to implement, it's really just a camera which enables us to show you where you are like here uh, and for instance like here on the main train station where we uh, have an implementation you directly can understand okay where is the your train leaving for instance it shows you then on the track, okay, which train uh, you have to enter, which door you have to enter. And then ideally, that's the future that's not working right now. It also even navigates you within the train where you have to go to. So the cool thing is that you, the whole building becomes interactive. And it shows you like a good friend where you have to go to. So walking through the building becomes more intuitive. I mean, as we have seen in uh, surveys that we've met, people are not walking around all the time like this, of course. But, I mean, as you can see it here, it shows you the way you go down till the next corner, you put it down, and when you are there at the corner, you look up again. And the cool thing is that everything not only becomes interactive, but also personalized. So here the idea, for instance, is that when you're coming from the Middle East and they're having a lot of clients from the Middle East, all the different signs that you're having are in Arabic, for instance. When you are from China, you then can see all the signs in, uh, in Mandarin, for instance. But we also have uh, clients like here, a uh, car manufacturer for instance, which also use then the same technology then for plant planning. So every eight years when a new car uh, will be produced, they are planning the new factory. But how does it really look into an existing factory if it's not from scratch a new one? Uh, do you have enough space? Is there a pillar in the middle uh, of one of the production steps? And especially also if you have for instance to tear down a wall like here, and they made a picture while building up the wall eight years ago, or you have the BIM model, you can see, for instance, what kind of pipes are in the wall, do you have to take care of something, and so on. So it really can be very beneficial uh, for production in a factory. But also, like we heard in the talk, uh, two talks before, all of the different IoT devices are sending you a lot of, of data into your backend. Um, what we can do is we can visualize this in the different buildings, which means one of our clients, for instance, is the second big and biggest real estate management company in, in Europe. They have a lot of universities, parliaments, and so on. So what they are doing is now they are making an implementation for universities, for students, for instance, to find their lecture room. What we can do is we take already the data that we have, we put it into a B2B application on the other hand side, and then you're not connecting it with a content management system, but you can connect it then with the building information management system. And for instance, like here, you're looking at an air condition, you see the status of an air condition, you have to change a filter, you just look there, you type and you reorder a new filter, for instance. They had just calculated that the, uh, that the savings will be roughly 15 times more than the cost for this implementation that they're having every year. So I mean, it's quite an easy calculation, to be fair. Um, we put a lot of uh, efforts also into our backend because what we have seen is, and I guess that's one of the major problems that augmented and virtual reality has, is how do you get the content, how do you manage it that everybody can use it. So we've set up a very easy to use web interface where you, uh, as a venue, ideally can do everything on your own, which means you just set up, for instance, the navigation routes, you can have the point of interest um, areas and um, Airports were the first clients that we had have, and we've seen, seen that the only thing that's constant is in an airport is the change. So it's very easy when you have a KFC in one shop and the next day it's a Starbucks, for instance. You just go into the back end and you say, okay, now it's a Starbucks, position the content new, and that's it. So it's very easy for them. 
and there's a user rights management in it. So for instance, Starbucks gets a login and they can either uh, at the first day they are opening the coffee shop already show the first office, uh, show, show the first offers for instance. And even, even positioning a content is very easy because what we've seen is we wanted to manage everything over the backend, but we've seen it's quite heavy. If you want to place, for instance, an offer in 2D in a 3D world, it's quite hard to understand this over a web interface. So there's a web, uh, there's an admin app from our tool. We're just going through the building and say, okay, here is some content, here's some content, here's some content. And all of this will be automatically connected with the content management system in the backend. Once you position the content, you just updated it like a website. So that's what I meant before. Whole building becomes an interactive website, more or less. Yeah, and as far as I've seen it, Till now, it's worldwide unique technology. I mean, we've seen that Google also now approaches this field, but right now they are doing it with, a, uh, with the depth sensor and with Google Tango. What we are trying to do is build a, you know, an umbrella over all the devices out there that you can use it with any device. Easy to implement because you don't need any kind of special hardware to do the implementation and on the operative side. Um, the most important thing, I guess, it's, it's not only a position, it shows you the right information on the right spot. And this opens up many, many new use cases. B2C, as we've seen, I mean, a lot of requests from museum, hospitals, airports, shopping malls. But the B2B use cases, I mean, as you, as you see then also in the exhibition, I mean, there are so many uh, possibilities that you can do with this, showing the right information on the right spot, and not only on a small scale, like you are in front already of a device, but really having a whole factory becoming interactive for inspections, for dynamic routing, for logistics, and so on. That's why uh, what we are aiming with this technology is as a B2C, you earn more money through advertising than you are spending, or either as a B2B, you save much more money with uh, new processes. That's it already. Thank you very much. Plenty of time for questions, if anyone has any. Yep. So you were saying that it's really, you, know, you don't need any special hardware, but like how often do you need to, if ever, uh, do you need to rescan, so to speak, the environment, because the environment will change, right? Exactly. That really, to be fair, these are some learnings we have to do, but we made some implementations in May 2015 and they are still working in the, at an airport. And for instance, we've thought that maybe in a duty free we have to rescan, but it's still working because, um, let's say in one picture we have between 1,000 to 3,000 features points that we can recognize and we only need as we have seen in the tests uh, 15 to 20 percent of these points because every point has a XYZ coordinate and a description to each other which means like you have a picture of my face and you have something here to recognize here to recognize my face is moving but it's still stable so that's why even if smaller things are changing or even a little bit bigger one it's not such an issue Normally in most of the venues you have very good uh, structure on the ceiling, so as long as you don't restructure the ceiling, but maybe you just change something in the duty-free area or something like this, it's no problem at all. And uh, sorry, maybe one small add-on. What we are working on is that it's also a self-healing solution because everybody walking through the venue sends us back a stream as well so that we understand what has changed. So for instance, 10 times someone sees a change we know it's not something dynamic, but it's really something that we can take back. But at the moment, for this, uh, we are still struggling with the quality of the smartphones. Since not all of the smartphones are calibrated, we only know now proactively, look, the quality of the recognition goes down in that area, please rescan. But we hope till the end of the year or next year that we even have a self-healing solution so that all of the people help us then to repair. In general, like mapping a city center for sure would be no problem because size-wise we build it like this that the whole uh, positioning runs on our server and you just do the positioning on the server and then you have a tracking for where you're being recognized. I guess for outdoors the only problem is uh, changing between daylight and nightlight. Um, we have some requests from theme parks in the Middle East where they say, come on, it's day and night without, in 10 minutes in, in Dubai, so it's much easier, just scan it twice. Uh, 
But uh, to be fair, that's not the focus that we have right now. We want to make a perfect product for indoors. But I guess for outdoors, if you scan it two or three times, and depending on the daytime, you can change the recognition file, uh, probably should work as well, theoretically. We haven't tried it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, of course, we also use the IMU. So um, if the optical tracking is not working, of course, it's also the IMU will jump over it. That was quite a complex process, to be fair, that you get 60 frames per second with optical tracking and IMU and that the client doesn't realize the difference, but yeah. Okay. One more quick question. Uh, n not for the B2C solution, but we also will have in Q3, hopefully, a professional solution. Professional for, because we have seen that a lot of uh, uh, applications in factories run on Windows. And of course, when you have, uh, if it doesn't have to work on all the devices and it just has to work every time, but you can have dedicated devices. Uh, and if the processor is quick enough, then you can have an offline version on a Windows PC with a special red camera as well. That's what we now implement for factories, yeah. but not the standard version. That's too much data. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks.